when I first got here, people even said that, you know, I got the job because it was on probation and that we gave it to him until we can get a better coach later on. And 23 years later that, you know, we're still standing here. So, um, you know, be careful about letting the game judge you. I tell this to our players all the time, my two boys all the time when they were coming up through this business that you want to make sure you get judged by the way you live your life. Um, not by a basketball game or a baseball game or a softball game, but we're in that profession, so we, we get judged that way all the time. But I do know this to be true, that I don't think you can put bad people in an organization and expect an organization to be good. And at the root of this, um, you know, we've got a good man in place of that program. And uh, because of that, uh, I, I do believe you're on an invisible climb, and I do think that you're going to get there because of the way you do it. Um, it takes longer to do something when you do it right, and and I think that's what you're doing. Um, I, 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 I look at it the same way we kind of hired our AD. You know, we went in there in that committee and we vetted it out. <clears throat> and I didn't I didn't go in there looking for a good AD. I went in there looking for a good man, and I think that's what we hired. But I think when you hire good men, <clears throat> I think the rest takes care of itself. And and I'm I'm just proud of your program that you're making. U.S. sport relevant. I, I, I know me and Coach Lotif talk about this all the time. We don't want to be always looked at as a baseball or softball school or, or, or just him and I. I mean, we, we, we're we deeper than that. Uh, we, 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 want, we want to be relevant in everything. And um, I appreciate you uh, making our girls' basketball team relevant because that's important to my sport, and I know it's important to Coach Lotif's sport. So having said that, um, uh, you know, good luck to you. Uh, I, I do believe you're on an invisible climb. For us, um, you know, we, we got rained out last week. I thought we did a good job of staying focused, uh, as Coach just talked about, and staying focused and staying ready. We had a team come in that you're supposed to beat. You got a team that comes in that uh, um, you don't recognize the name. You got somebody coming in, and not to be disrespectful to, to his program, which I don't want to ever disrespect anybody's program. But on the surface, we were supposed to win three games. Um, and so for the, for the players, we, we, we talk about handling us all the time. Um, that, was, that was the true epitome this weekend of trying to handle us because you're in, you're in a different mindset where you're supposed to win. Uh, you're supposed to do good. And uh, that's not always, if you talk to coaches, the easiest thing to handle from time to time. And for us to go out, not play sloppy, or throw the ball all over the place, or, or do any of those kind of things three times in a row, I thought was a good sign. Things ramp up now after this week. Uh, of course, with Louisiana Tech, they're, they're very good this year. They were good last year. Um, uh, so so that's, the, that's the big thing we got in front of us now. And then we got conference this weekend. So, uh, you know, things start to change because every coach is going to tell his team that they're zero and zero again. So no matter who comes in or who you play at first in conference, whether they were doing good or they were doing bad, they're all coming back in with a mindset that, that they're back to zero and zero. So what you did prior to this really doesn't matter. So so we have to take 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 tomorrow, take a step forward. We'll be on the road um, and, 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 and get after it uh, with, with a team that's playing very well. And then from there, come back and practice. Um, they were off yesterday. Uh, we're going to work today, play tomorrow, uh, work Thursday, and then get ready for, for the weekend. So um, other than that, open the floor for questions you might have. What's the pitching plan for the week? For this week? We'll decide that when we get to practice today. We'll go over it with our pitching staff and give it to Jeff to give to y'all. Um, I don't ever like my players reading about stuff in the paper. I like telling them face to face. So we're off on Mondays, so we don't see them. So I won't see them today till 1.30. That'll be the first time I get to tell the pitcher that we're going to start and the pitcher we're not going to start face to face. I always want them to hear it from me face to face. And then from there, I'll give it back to Jeff, and then Jeff will give it to you guys. Yeah, we're starting to narrow down, I think, the 9, 10, 11 guys that we want to kind of put out there. And then you'll have an injury from here to here, or <clears throat> you'll have somebody maybe going cold maybe along the way. Like Coach said, very rarely do you have nine guys in a lineup, you know, be good every night for a long extended period of time. You've got to, you've got to massage it along the way. But you do want to kind of create um, 
um, some type of continuity with, with nine to ten somewhere in there, and we think we've narrowed that down. We still need a couple guys that are starting to come, you know, different places. I think Joe got going this week, weekend. Um, we got to get a couple more guys going in there uh, so that pitchers can't weave their way through the lineup. Um, there's a difference between, you know, a thoroughbred and a loaf of bread. So we got to get a couple of these guys to, to you know, come on and, and, and be thoroughbreds. Uh, I think they will in time. I just think the more we get live ABs, the better we'll get. What are some of the challenges App State kind of presents? I know record-wise you said they're pretty solid, but last year it seemed like there's a pretty evenly matched series. Yeah, I think I – think <clears throat> Coach said this early in his press conference early in the year. So much of this business is when you play people, you know, <clears throat> is is how they play and at the time. Our game is so much rhythm and timing. Um, who's cold, who's hot, who's pitching good, who's not pitching good. Um, uh, with us, you're trying to find the Sunday starter, you know I mean? So you're always constantly trying to, to massage things out. And so I think a lot of times it's, it's when you play people, where you play them. Um, we're fortunate to open this one at home. Um, so again, <clears throat> I, I, I'm more like coach when we, we would sound like a broken record of worried about us all the time. But I, I really, really, you'd be astounded on, on how much I don't look at stuff. Um, um, scouting reports, I mean, zero. Um, I, I just really stay focused on us um, all the time, 24 hours a day. I worry about us. How are we thinking? You know, what, what, what are they thinking? What lenses are they looking through the night before we play St. Peter's? Or what are, they, what are the lenses they looking through after we win Friday night and come off a potential no-hitter for Gunner? What, 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 what are they thinking now for today? Um, so that's constantly what my worry always is. So right now, <clears throat> we want to, you know, try to get in there and throw down tomorrow night because that's a, you know, you got some good old cold weather, you got a ballpark that the ball's going to travel, you got a team that's feeling real good about themselves. <clears throat> we, we a team that can't believe we're good off a three-game sweep, we can't be looking at that because they'll send us back here and show us how good we really think we are. We got to understand where we're headed, that that was, that was a, a should be. That should have happened, three wins. That's not... Um, you know that the biggest positive thing we did out of that was we handled us for three games. Now what we got to do is get ready for tomorrow night, and then we can't let tomorrow night's win or loss affect what we do into the weekend. Because again, I'm going to say it again: in our profession, uh, in baseball, you lose a third of the games you're going to play in. So uh, I wish I could sit with the schedule and pick and choose my third. I'm going to lose this one. I'm going to lose this one. I'm going to lose this one. Uh, I'm not going to lose this one, but we can't pick and choose. And so what you can pick and choose, though, is how you respond after you get a loss. That's what you can pick and choose. And so that's what I try to stay focused on all the time. You know, that 58-win team never lost back-to-back -back games until the Super Regional. That's tough to do in this profession. They never lost a back-to-back -back game until a Super Regional. At the end of the year, their last two is the only two they lost back-to-back. That is very tough to do. So what you want to try to get a team good at is it's not always good at winning. It's, it's being able to come back after you've lost. That's, I'd rather take uh, an under-talented team that can come back from losing than a super-talented team that can't come back from losing because in this profession, I can't protect our players from losing a game. I can't. Um, the one thing we can help them with is how will they respond after they lose that game? Because I think the bad teams that have that have tough years, one loss sends them into a tailspin. That's what to me. That's what gets bad teams in trouble in this profession. You can't tell me the last place team in Major League Baseball is that much worse than the best team in Major League Baseball, talent-wise. It, it's it's how they handle the winning and the losing. To me, that's. That's the difference maker. And so what we want to try to do is become good because, man, I've seen so many coaches like St. Peter's, okay, he runs out, he faces Gunnar Leje, right? So Gunnar almost throws a no-no. Now, if, if I'm going to face a guy and on a night like that and he does what he did, I'm going to move on. I'm not going to run my team after that game for not competing. I mean, 
you, you got to be careful with, with sometimes when you lose how you manage your team because on, on most nights when you face what he did, you're going to lose. So why take a game that you were probably going to lose anyway and let it affect you for the next three to five games? I, I, I think you have, to, you have to, you know, be careful with that um, when, you, when you hand your team. I, I, I don't always know how to do it perfect, but I do know that in this profession, you've got to be really careful about when you drop a game because um, you're going to lose a third. It's what you do with that last third that counts, man. You're going to win a third and lose a third. That's a given. What's not a given is what you do with the other third. And I think that comes from how you handle the losing in that first third. You mentioned Gunner, what he did Friday and really what he's done this season. It seems like he's taken his approach, his game to another level. As a pitching guy, what have you seen mechanically, approach-wise, maybe heightened over this early season? Well, I, I just think, you know, Coach said that about his, his senior player, about how she came to practice every day. I think, I think, I think if, if, you, if, you, if you look at greatness and you go study it, that's all you got to do is follow greatness around for a day or two, and then you'll see why they're great. And, 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 and Gunner's got no play in him. I mean, it's like, it's like you know, uh, talking to a 30-year-old man. I mean, you, you don't, I don't have to worry about him not being prepared. Um, I, I, we totally turn our back on his preparation. He, he, they, our, our handling our pitchers is not a dictatorship. They do what they need to do to get ready. We do not throw a blanket over them. So if Gunner wants to stand upside down on his head in the outfield during BP on Thursday before he pitches, he's allowed to go do that if that's what he wants to do. Uh, but if you follow him around and watch him get himself ready, He's ready. And, and I think the team sees that. Nick Lee's the same way. All our starters have been very fortunate with that. All the great starters have, have done that. They've prepared hard. And I think that's why it makes all the teams that Peyton Manning played for so good is because they watch him prepare. And, and, and when you watch Gunner prepared, he's not out during the week drinking. I mean, he's not out in bars. I mean, you know, the guy's, the guy's where he's supposed to be. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. You watch him prepare at a high level. Um, and it's like they said about Roger Clemens. At one time when he pitched, they hit more home runs on the night that he pitched than any other time that anybody pitched for him. And it was because he adrenalized his team. It was by the way he prepared. And when you prepare hard enough and you get out onto the field, you force people around you to step up because – you, you've, you've, you've taken so much preparation to get ready, other people have to play up to you. And I think, I think what Gunner does is he, he just gives you a chance to win. That's all he does. That's all what you want out of your Friday night starter. Really all you start is, if you can get it, is a chance to win and have the same guy show up every night. And then he has the ability to take what he has that night and use it. He doesn't get spooked. You know, like one night they came up, the other like the other night, and they, they tried to take away – the outer half. They tried to slow swing everything to match up to his changeup because they know that's what his, what his plus is. And so he flipped to the fastball to the inner half of the plate or to his glove side of the plate and beat him in all night. A lot of starting pitchers can't do that. When you take away their strength, they get spooked when you have to flip to the other side of the plate. But the one thing Gunner can do, he finds out which side of the plate you're going to come get and then he'll go to the other side. He doesn't. He doesn't get spooked by it. Um, so, so that's why those guys make Friday night starters. Friday night starters is not about stuff. He he doesn't light the radar gun up. But Friday night starter is not about stuff. It's about who you are. And we tell our players that all the time. If you want to be the Friday night starter, you better go work on you. I'm not going to pull a radar gun out and let you all throw and go. Okay, boy, you're the Friday night starter, because I've had guys that had great stuff but they're not the right person to go out on Friday night. Gunner not, not only has good stuff, but he's the right person to go out on Friday night, if that makes any sense. He makes his team better. Any more questions? The, uh, you've always talked about how the way it is now, RPI is such a factor in this. Is tomorrow night sort of an example of that? I mean, you're playing a team with you know, really good RPI. In sure, the sure. I mean, that's the trouble with the RPI. I wish we'd do the RPI for weekends. That's what I wish we'd go to. 
and get back to get the RPI out of the middle of the week so that we don't have to worry about arms. I mean, I don't want to be disrespectful to any of my opponents, but you can conceivably look at this as you could rearrange your pitching. There's people rearranging their pitching right now, throwing Friday night starters in the middle of the week because their chance to get somewhere is via the RPI. So conceivably, Thursday night is a big RPI game for us. Okay, So you catch it on a Wednesday, which is dangerous. So if you got a chance to win with six outs, do you let Demo have that? Or do you pull him off that because he's got to be ready for Friday night to close because you're trying to win a conference championship? That's, just, that's what I don't like. That's what I don't like. So I tell him all the time, you know, in those type of games, you know, don't come stand by me in the eighth inning because you go find yourself in that game so we can take care of our RPI. But we can't do it. We can't let him have tomorrow night more than a three-out save because he only has 24 hours of rest. We try to use one hour of rest for every pitch they throw. To, to, to be good. So what we don't want is we don't want to get into a 40 pitch save to, to, to win the RPI and then the hope I don't need him on Friday night, you know, and then have to rearrange all your pitching going into conference. So it is, I mean, it just, it is what it is. You know, the, the good old days were we, we took a midweek game like their game against Baylor and he took a freshman pitcher that he needed to develop. And he and and oh, I give you I give you a clear example. The, the fans wanted to hang me when when I pitched um, um, Andy Grove against LSU as a true freshman from a Class C school. Why? 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 I, I don't I don't live through your hatred world of LSU. I live through a world of I've got to develop somebody. Okay, so they they beat him up. They were hitting some balls back to Nicholson Drive. But later that season, he beat South Carolina in South Carolina, gave up one run in the first, and threw eight zeros after that. You know where that came from? That came from back when he got roughed up at LSU. If we don't get him roughed up at LSU, he doesn't beat South Carolina. So which one do you want? I mean, see, nobody wants development, man, nobody, because development is ugly. Oh, Lord, what's wrong? You lost five to four. Oh, my God. If I'd have, we, we like this weekend. We we could we could we could have took four and five freshmen and threw them, but you lose to St. Peter's. Oh my God, two hundred ninety nine RPI. What's Rover Show even scheduling those guys for? But it's the price of development. Nobody wants to go to a restaurant and have the the the, the, the waiter in training. We don't want to drive up to the fast food window and have somebody in training. Where do you develop these people? I mean. Is there a school you send them to? I mean, development's not pretty, and very, very rarely do you win in development. People think development and winning is the answer, but but you're going to find it's hard to believe. Coach just said it earlier. They learned something from losing five to four. You Development is not going to be pretty, but when do you do it? I mean, it, it's it's a that's why I don't like the RPI the way it's set up is because now there's more onus on tomorrow night's game than there is a three game series this weekend for conference. And that's that's that shouldn't be that way. And I think that's why we're overthrowing arms and that's why you run into closers to make them throw more. I think we're running rearranging pitching all the time with kids not getting enough rest. I think all that comes off that RPI. Um, why not just do RPI on the weekend and let everybody develop people in the middle of the week? I mean, uh, that'd be my vote uh, because I'd love – freshman pitchers, man, develop so much through duress, through stress, not in an inter-squad game like he had this weekend. I mean, that's – that's it's good. They need to do it to, to stay with rhythm and tempo and everything. But, but, man, he needs to put her in the fire. He needs to put her in the fire. Uh, and will it be pretty? Probably not. But I know this, the more you keep putting them in the fire, the better and better they get at handling the fire. I know that for a fact because I saw Andy Grow do it. Um, he had two, two base runners on, first and second, no outs against South Carolina. They were 50 and six, and we were playing at their ballpark. And they had wrapped him with some of the most vicious fans I've seen. 
and and he 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 stands up. He doesn't collapse that inning. He gets an out, moves some runners over. There's a sack fly. He traded a run for an out. That's what our development says. Trade a run for an out when he gets to third base. He trades a run for the out. He gets two outs. That stays away from the three-run inning. He, he punches the next hitter out, and then he hangs up eight zeros from there, and we go to Omaha. Um, uh, if we'd have tried to beat LSU that night with, with an older arm because it's LSU, I seriously don't think we develop Andy Groh, personally. But as coaching staffs, you know, where, when do you develop? Because everybody wants to win today. Um, but boy, they want you to get that freshman ready. How the hell you get him ready and win at the same time? That's a, that's a, that's a tough thing to do, man. But anyway, that's my short answer <laughs> on development. So. We good? Any more